Commissioner, it's been a long time too since Too long, Kevin. Too long. <laughs> front of the group. How you doing? I'm all right. How about you? It's been a pretty great month, wouldn't you say? It has. It has. Social Worker Appreciation Month, Women's History Month. I'll let you take it from there. We we've had a we've had a nice run. We've had a we nice have. run. We have, you know, what you'll see pretty soon is just some tokens of our appreciation as we think not only about social workers, but um, all of the other supporting cast and everybody across the department who makes this um, department work. And, you know, we have been recognized over the last couple of weeks for a lot of that great work. So, you know, uh, first and foremost, hopefully you have seen um, in the media outlets the um, exit from the WANF consent decree, and that's pretty significant. Absolutely. A 30 plus year federal lawsuit. Um, some of us remember <laughs> what life was like in the department before the lawsuit from untapped caseloads to no centralized care line to a non-existent academy for workforce development to Tons many of kids other- out of state, trying, you know, a lot of kids in congregate settings. You know, yep. very few um, in relative care. Absolutely, we're we're actually featuring uh, in our spotlight on what's right newsletter this month. Um, kind of the history of what life was like before the consent decree. And when you really put it down on paper, it is truly, as Brian Lynch said, agency and system transformation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was thinking too that like. Um, decrees right now or lawsuits right now really don't take on an entire system. They, you know, hone in on one of those areas. I think one of the reasons why ours took so long is because it was really system overhaul. You know, um, we know that some a lot of the heavy lifting happened um, over the last 10 years, you know, over the last administration as we kind of moved into um, the roles that we have today and really yeah. sustaining a lot of those measures, identifying what safety looks like for us solidifying and doubling down on our relative care and our commitment to having kids in congregate placements for um, um, treatment purposes only. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, the, the interesting thing is even in the um, exit motion related to WANF, there's an acknowledgement of our racial justice work, but the original lawsuit had nothing to do with that. That just shows you how far we've come. I mean, the, the title name of the lawsuit is a little boy by the name of Juan. You know, how do we not talk about race and equity? And I think, you know, where we are today as we think about uh, the work that we do and the outcomes that we have, it's it's pretty special. Absolutely. And I, I what was really great for me to see is, um, you know, to be a part of the federal court hearing and to hear the wonderful words um, that Judge Underhill said, but then also to hear uh, and be a part of the press conference with Governor Lamont and to just see how proud he was of the department. And also then, um, we had some folks that understood nationally what the landscape is, is of child welfare mm -hmm. who really commented that, you know, Connecticut is a leader in three major areas of our practice. Yep. As you indicated, racial justice, mm -hmm. uh, eliminating the need for congregate care placements. We have less than 7% of our kids in congregate care. Yep. And the fact that we have 44% of our youth in kinship care. We are really leaders across the country in those three aspects of our work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, for as much as the ending of the decree is symbolic and it, you know, really is a finality, it's really the culmination of, you know, where we have been over the last 30 years. You know, you talked about yourself and people like Deputy Commissioner Jody Hill Lilly, you guys are the OGs, the, the <laughs> people who were pre 1F. You know, <laughs> there were groups like me who came in. Um, uh, you know, at a time when we were trying to right size our caseloads and, you know, at the time that I came into the department, really wanting to save the world, not even knowing what this what a consent decree was, you know, and as fast forward three decades later, it spanned my entire career. And, you know, really thinking about the way the department operates today in comparison to there, you know, I want to give homage to the values instilled in the yeah. department that I came to, that hasn't changed. We've been committed to kids and families. The mechanism to be able to do the work that we do, the stability of resources, the stability of our workforce, and all of those things in terms of partnerships and relationships, they all matter. 
you know, and where we are today is a testament to the grit and the determination of a department who really wants to do the best for kids and families. So, you know, hats off to all of you and appreciation for getting us where we are today. Absolutely. And I, I so I think staff are probably saying to themselves, well, what does this mean for me? What does this mean now? And and there is going to be an, uh, an all staff town hall scheduled so we can talk through what it means, what it doesn't mean and what we we can expect moving forward in the yeah. department. Yeah, we're excited to be able to also share that um, the Family First um, Prevention and Services Act or our FFPSA um, prevention plan was also approved by the federal government. And I think the the exit of the consent decree, along with the approval of our um, uh, prevention plan really creates um, a roadmap to really thinking about what the next iteration of the department and our role within communities can look like. And I'm really excited, not just from um, the the ability to make history, you know, with the exit of such a, a, a monumentous lawsuit, but also recognizing what's next. You know, how do we help our kids and families um, recover from just an awful pandemic that has, you know, rocked every family across Connecticut and, you know, across the world. But where are we in Child Protective Services as we move forward? So, yeah, stay tuned for information on when we can do a town hall and, uh, you know, share some more information about that. Absolutely. And Commissioner, I think we also wanted to, to remind staff and draw attention again to the contact tracing memo that went out a couple days ago and mm -hmm. some of the new guidelines embedded there. Yeah, so at the end of this video, as we had done in the past, we used to share statistics and those types of things. Um, from the memo that was distributed or disseminated earlier this week, we recognized that there wasn't a need to do that any longer. Of course, we want people to take precautions. Um, of course, we believe that vaccination and booster is the best way to kind of keep this um, virus under wraps. Uh, and recognizing the efforts that we're still, you know, underway to make sure that the kids that that are in care get the option of being vaccinated if they fit the age group. Um, but I want to make sure that we draw people's attention to that memo because we won't be sharing additional stats anymore. But there is still an expectation um, if there is a test positive of what folks will need to do. Absolutely, absolutely. So, lot to celebrate this month. Social Worker Appreciation Month, Women's History, Family First Plan Approved, <laughs> 1F Consent Decree Ends, Contact <laughs> Tracing Memo. So look, again, look for that invite to the All Staff Town Hall. Uh, we'll, we will be sharing more information and we will be touching base with the staff soon. Absolutely. You know, just really thinking about how staff themselves have been keeping themselves safe and keeping the kids in care safe and, you know, really emphasizing the work with relatives, recognizing that when kids are in our care that they um, get the, their needs met and, and that, you know, the role that we play with uh, spelling out what that looks like in our case plans and, um, you know, really working together across divisions. That's the DCF I know. And that's the DCF the OGs work with us on uh, to make sure that we're better, stronger and faster than we ever were. So um, kudos to all of you. You'll see um, an appreciation from all of us very soon. And please read your spotlight on what's right because you're going to hear a lot more information. So with that, Ken, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Bye, everyone.